Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about poetry and how to help your child fall in love with poetry. And hopefully you like poetry as well. It's been said that poetry is a form of speech that actually is poetry is, a, is language that's dressed up in its best clothes. It's a form of speech that is a little bit more refined, a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more musical, and a little bit more entertaining. There are some rules about poetry. First of all, you're supposed to read it often. You're supposed to read it aloud. You're supposed to keep it simple, interesting, funny, humorous, spooky, and exciting. Leland Jacobs is a poet, and he said, poetry is caught more so than taught. It's caught and not taught. So that's what we have to do. We have to start out and we have to introduce our, our children to fun poetry and humorous poetry. Interestingly, um, children are, they fall in love with poetry at a pretty young age, particularly the rhyme of poetry, the sing-songy rhyme. One of the reasons is babies have heard their mother's heartbeat um, for nine months. And so when you as a parent read poetry, if you read rhymes like nursery rhymes, they immediately respond to them. They love them because of that rhyme. So let me share with you a few books and we'll go through different ages and stages. These are finger rhymes. Finger rhymes are really fun when a child first starts out. Finger rhyme, rhymes like, By, this little piggy went to market, this little piggy stayed home, this little piggy had roast beef and so forth. The Brave Old Duke of York is another one that children love, particularly and most of these books, they actually include all of the different hand motions and everything else that you can do. Of course, there's nothing like the classic nursery rhymes, the Mother Goose nursery rhymes. And I love this particular um, um, artist. Here is Peter, Peter Pumpkin Eater, had a wife and couldn't keep her, put her in a pumpkin shell, and there he kept her very well. The interesting thing about all of these as well is children pick up um, these, these poems, these nursery rhymes, and they memorize them and they keep them in their memory banks for the rest of their lives. My father died at the age of 95. He couldn't remember what he did the day before, but he could recite all of these different nursery rhymes and the ABCs that he had learned as a child. That's the power of memorization. Which brings me to another point. I don't know about your children, but when I was in school, memorization was still important. It was still considered an art. It was still considered something that actually helped people with vocabulary. It helped them with communication skills. It helped them with being able to stand in front of a group and deliver something that they had memorized. So from the kindergarten on, I memorized all different kinds of poems. Fortunately, my children also went to an elementary school where they were, were required to do the same. Now at my school, we actually had recitations where you know the best of the best got to stand in front of the whole entire school and recite different poems. That didn't happen necessarily in my kids' school, but if it happens in your school with your children, you're very lucky. If not, you want to do something about it at home. One thing you can do is you can write different poems down on cards. And so when you're driving in the car, instead of looking at the, the cell phone or something else, actually start memorizing different types of poems. And I can promise you that your children will memor memorize those poems and they will keep them with them the rest of their lives. When I was growing up, there were these two books. These are child craft. These orange ones are very, very popular and they were popular for many years. Inside the covers of a couple of them were all different poems. And this is where I got mine. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Hiawatha and um, What's the other one about, listen, my children, and you shall hear the midnight ride of Paul Revere. I memorized all those. I memorized one about uh, Robinson Crusoe. The night was thick and hazy when the Piccadilly Daisy carried down the crew and captain in the sea. I think the water drowned them for they never, never found them, and I know they didn't come ashore with me. And then it goes on and on and on and on. If your children have actually memorized some poems, then you can go back to them now if they're adults and say, tell me those poems that you memorized and I can guarantee you they'll be able to rattle them off. Now, in order to uh, introduce your children to poetry, you want to cho choose some amazing poets. One of the most favorite ones, um, he was on the New York Times bestseller list for 186 weeks. Libraries complained that the number one book that is continually stolen basically from the library is one of this uh, particular poets, his book. And of course, this is Shel Silverstein. 
He wrote two books, um, <clears throat> A Light in the Attic and Where the Sidewalk Ends. And for some reason, children absolutely love the poetry of Shel Silverstein. Get those books. In fact, in some schools across the United States, they talk about the textbooks, the boring textbooks the kids can't stand. And they said none of the textbooks are ever stolen, but the Shel Silverstein books, for some reason, they are taken and never returned. And so some schools, they decided to buy a Shel Silverstein book for every child in the classroom so there wouldn't be that problem and that they would be able to refer to it many, many times. Get those two books. Your children will love the poetry of Shel Silverstein. Another um, poet that is a real favorite, and he's got a lot of funny poems, is Jack Polutsky. He happened to be one of our family's favorites as well. Now, he puts out a series of poems. There's one for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, and they're very, very funny, and uh, it, it goes into a lot of different funny things about Christmas and all these holidays. Another one is called Zoo Doings, and this is a fun one, too. Let me read one to you. The lion has a golden mane, and under it, a clever brain. He lies around and idly roars and lets the lioness do the chores. So it goes on and on about all the different types of animals. Two others that he has is something big has um, been here. And I think this one is the new kid on the block. The cover's gone on it. But they're filled with fun, fun poems that kids love. So every night before your kids go to bed, read them a poem. Get a Shel Silverstein poem. Get one of the Jack Prolusky poems. Maybe if you want to have some of the more classic poems that I memorized as a child, there are books out there on different ones of the classic poems. Read them every single night before. I have a part of your bedtime ritual, in fact, and read them a poem every single night. And then encourage them and encourage yourself as a family that you're going to memorize at least one or two poems a month. Now, if you're, it's only four lines, then you can pretty much memorize those four lines before the kids go to school in the morning. You know, if they get longer poems and it's going to expand their repertoire of memorization skills, vocabulary skills, presentation skills, it'll take a little bit longer. But make that a goal in your home, that poetry is going to be at the top of the list. Your children will fall in love with poetry, and then when they get to high school and they're studying more serious poets like Emily Dickinson or... Robert Frost or Edna St. Vincent Millay, they will have a greater understanding and appreciation of poetry because you as a parent have introduced it to them from birth on. I'm going to leave you with one of my very favorite lines from an Edna St. Vincent Millay. My candle burns at both its ends. It will not last the night, but ah, my friends and oh, my friend, foes, it gives a lovely light. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.